spoke. Robbie was relentlessly harassed and bullied at school because he was gay. His mother made frequent visits to the school. Nothing ever seemed to change. During Christmas break, on the next to last day of Christmas break in 1997, Robbie figured out the combination to his father's safe. He got his father's loaded gun. He took it to his bedroom and he shot himself to death because he couldn't face going back to school the next day. Change did not come fast enough for Robbie Kirkland. In 2004, Glisten had its annual Summer Start student leadership training, which Mikey spoke about earlier. One of the students that year of the 50 we had picked from around the country as the best and brightest Gay Straight Alliance student leaders in the country was a kid I will call Brett. You know, Brett was probably my favorite that year because he was like me. From a little town in the South, from a fundamentalist family, from an intolerant school. My heart broke for Brett on the last day of that training when he told me that his mother had given him a choice. He could either come home and not be gay or he could not come home at all. I thought to myself, how do you ask someone to not be what they are? How long can they do that? For Brett, it turned out to be a little bit more than a year. Brett moved in with friends that fall, but after several months missing home like any high school kid, he asked if he could come back, and he accepted his mother's terms that he not be gay. A few months after that, I heard from his older brother. His older brother asked that we take Brett off, his mailing, off our mailing list. I asked him why. He told me Brett had taken his own life. Brett didn't need our mail anymore. Change did not come fast enough for Brett. At approximately 8.15 Pacific time on Tuesday, February 12th, a 15-year-old eighth grader named Lawrence King sat down at his desk at E.O. Green Junior High School in Oxnard, California. Anticipating Valentine's Day later that week, like many middle schoolers, Lawrence had given a valentine to the person he had a crush on. The problem was that person was another boy, Brandon McInerney. After getting the valentine on Monday, Brandon came to school on Tuesday. He brought with him a loaded gun. He put it to the back of Lawrence's head. He pulled the trigger. Change did not come fast enough for Lawrence King. So you may be asking at this point, um, who is responsible? Who is to blame for these tragedies? Well, part of that blame needs to be laid at the feet of state legislators in 39 states, including, I am embarrassed to admit, New York, who have yet to enact the same protections for lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender students that students who are harassed based on their race and religion already have. Part of the blame goes to school administrators like those at E.O. Green Junior High School in Oxnard, California, who knew that Lawrence was being bullied and harassed and who stood by and did nothing. And frankly, part of the blame lies with all of us in this room tonight. Yes, us. Because we all know we could have done a little bit more. We could have put a little more time in. We could have been a little more generous. After all, it was Martin Luther King who once said, history will record that the great tragedy of this period of social transition was not the strident clamor of bad people, but the appalling silence of good people. We, the good people, allow what happened to Brett, allow what happened to Lawrence, allow what happened to Robbie to happen by not doing more. We must do more. We must do better. This has got to stop. Well, beginning on August 1st, I will play a different role in this fight as a supporter rather than as a leader but I'd like to give some advice to whoever takes over as the leader of GLSEN after me. Be impatient. Demand change now. 
Never, ever, ever forget that time is a luxury that children cannot afford. And I have a request of all of you in this room tonight. Please, those new leaders will need you. They will need your time. They will need your money. They will need your support more than ever because our work is far from through. Please give it to them at a level unlike any you have ever given before, remembering that we owe it to Robbie Kirkland, to Brett, and to Lawrence King. Well, if I've learned anything about myself over the last 45 years, it's that you could take the boy out of the Baptist church, but you can't take the Baptist church out of the boy. And um, I was at a meeting recently with my very good friend, Kate Kendall, the executive director of the National Center for Lesbian Rights, whose litigation last Thursday resulted in the equalization of marriage rights in the state of California. And as I am wont to do, I quoted the Bible, and Kate said, we're done. A meeting's not over till Kevin Jennings has quoted the Bible. And so, in my final words to you, I will quote the good book. I will quote the final words of the Apostle Paul to the Corinthians in 2 Corinthians. The words I picked out from my own mother-in-law's tombstone. And now I must say goodbye. Encourage one another. Live together in harmony and peace. And the God of harmony and peace will always be with you. It has truly been an honor. Good night. <laughs>